The Saucony Endorphin Pro 4, what I described in my initial impressions video, link in the description, as probably the best of the rest of the carbon plated super shoes that are out there currently right now. But what do I really mean by that? So I thought it'd be interesting to compare this shoe against a few of the top tier carbon plated super shoes that are out there right now. And what do I actually mean by top tier carbon plated super shoes? Well, I'm really talking about these five shoes. And I'm calling these top tier because these are the shoes that we consistently see on the feet of elite runners at world major marathons. Now, there are other shoes out there, but these are the five that are consistently on podiums and doing well. And I think everyone would agree that these are really the best in class at the moment. But for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to be comparing the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 to the Adidas Evo 1 or the Nike Alpha Fly 3, mostly because I don't have either one of those shoes. But at the same time, I don't think it's a real fair comparison of the Endorphin Pro 4 to those two shoes. Instead, I'm going to focus on the Metaspeed Edge Paris, the Nike Vaporfly 3, and the Adidas Adios Pro 3. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to treat the Metaspeeds really as one shoe. I'm going to talk about the Edge, but everything I'm going to say about the Edge would really apply to this guy too, because the new Metaspeed Paris series, they really are similar shoes. There's a plate configuration difference, and there's some minor uh, differences between how wide the shoes are and some of the width in the shoe, but for the most part, they are the same shoe. And if you want to know more, I have a long video about choosing the right Metaspeed for you where I go into this difference in depth. Card on the screen, link in the description, go check that one out. Additionally, for the Nike Vaporfly, I'm also going to treat the Vaporfly 3 and the Vaporfly 2 is really the same shoe. We do still see a lot of elites choosing to run in the Vaporfly 2. Now that's a whole other topic I'm going to make a whole other video about next month in May, but for this video I'm going to be talking about the Vaporfly 3, but everything I say is really going to be in reference to either one of the Vaporflies. So that's the format of this video, the Endorphin Pro 4 against the Metaspeed Edge Paris, the Nike Vaporfly 3, and the Adidas Adios Pro 3. Now, starting with the Endorphin Pro 4 versus the Metaspeed Edge Paris, these are two 2024 shoes. These are two shoes that have come out this year that I think a lot of people are thinking about, uh, do they need one or both? And I've seen that in the comments of previous Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 videos that I've done. Now, with the Pro 4, we have 40 mil in the heel, 32 mil in the forefoot, and it gives you an 8 mil drop. The weight comes in at 7.7 ounces or 218 grams. Again, that's for the US men's size nine reference size that everyone uses. And these specs are coming from Running Warehouse because they measure shoes across brand consistently. In the A6 Metaspeed Edge Paris, we have 39 and a half millifoam in the heel, 34.5 millifoam in the forefoot, giving you a five mil drop. And I will say that five mil drop is noticeable. And the weight of the Edge Paris is 6.5 ounces or 184 grams, which makes it one of, if not the most lightweight shoe in this class, in this sort of super shoe class. Now, the real difference between these two shoes is, I think, in the width. And this is really the biggest, one of the biggest differences between these two shoes. The Endorphin Pro, as you can see, is considerably wider in the contact patch. Not only in the forefoot at 11.7 centimeters, but the waist at 7.4 centimeters and in the heel at 8.9 centimeters. And I will say the heel in the Endorphin Pro 4 is much wider because it has a very drastic uh, medial and lateral heel flare. And if you look at the Edge Paris, you see that it's a very narrow platform. 10 centimeters in the forefoot, 5.8 in the waist, and 7.8 in the, in the uh, heel. And that is the biggest difference between these shoes. This shoe, as I've described, runs like a normal shoe. It feels like a normal shoe. It feels like a trainer with more tech, more features in it, but it runs very much like you'd expect it to run. This is very much a racing shoe, a super shoe, a super shoe designed for elite runners and really to optimize uh, an elite runner's uh, strength, gait, how they run, their foot strike, everything about an elite runner. This is really optimized around that. And you can tell with how narrow this platform is. Now the midsoles of both these shoes have super foams. This has Power Run PB, which is Saucony's uh, 
all arounder super foam. And then there's a core that goes heel to toe in the shoe of Power and HG, which is Saucony's new higher resiliency or higher energy return foam. And that's directly under the foot above the plate. And this very much feels like a shoe with a lot of super foam in it. This shoe, the ASICS, has ASICS's new FF Turbo Plus, which is a better PIBA based a uh, slightly softer, much more resilient or much better energy return super foam from the last generation of FF Turbo. And you really do notice that this shoe has considerably more energy return and rebound compared to this shoe, even with the power and HG under the foot. The other huge difference between these shoes is the fit. And if I put these side by side, you can even notice the difference. This is a very, very narrow shoe. This is a fairly generous shoe. So if you have even a remotely wide foot, you consider your foot even remotely wide, marginally wide, this is probably not going to work for you because this is a very narrow, very race fit. Um, and this shoe is much more generous in how it fits, not only the upper material, but also just the width of the forefoot, though this isn't a wide shoe. This, it just tells you how narrow this shoe is. Additionally, because the platform, the actual foam, the outsole, what's touching the ground in this shoe is so narrow, and the platform or the where your foot is actually sitting in the shoe is so narrow, if you can somehow get your wider foot in this shoe, you're going to have a problem because you're going to be spilling over the sides of this shoe and it's going to be very uncomfortable and it's going to lead to this shoe being very uh, wobbly. This shoe can also feel very unstable in very twisty courses or pavement that isn't really pristine. If you're on a high cambered road, this shoe wants to kind of roll forward. If you're in kind of broken pavement, this shoe is just not fun to run in. Where this shoe, this shoe would just power through all of that and you really don't notice it. I will say both these shoes also will roll you forward, but they do it in a very different way. The ASICS does it in a very sort of traditional using the four foot rocker and the stiffness of the carbon fiber plate to roll you forward. This shoe has a fairly drastic falling forward feeling where this shoe uses the speed roll technology, Saucony speed roll technology, which is the toe spring that's in the plate, which I talked a lot about my initial impressions. So the roll forward in this shoe is very smooth, but it's not as drastic. It doesn't ever feel like you're falling forward in this shoe. The shoe just keeps rolling you forward very smoothly. That's another sort of thing that's similar about these shoes is they're both extremely stiff. They have very, very stiff carbon fiber plates. ASICS, I think, has the stiffest carbon fiber plates of any super shoe out there. And even with the slightly softer FF Turbo Plus foam, this is still a very, very stiff shoe. And I will say that this is surprisingly stiff for um, a Saucony because I just don't expect this plate or this shoe to be as stiff. This is much stiffer, but both these, I would say, are very stiff. But again, the way they roll you forward is, is similar in the result, but it's very different in how it feels. This feels like a more normal shoe, feels like a more understandable shoe. And if you're not used to running in a super shoe, this is probably the one to start with. If you are used to super shoes, this is probably still going to take you a little time to get used to because it is just so uh, tuned for real performance running an elite or someone who really has raced a lot in carbon plated super shoes, this is really going to be optimal. As far as how both these shoes run, I would say they're quite similar actually in the result. The way they both roll you forward is very smooth and I found in my own uh, data running about these shoes, I'm getting similar results though this shoe feels faster and this may be the fastest super shoe that I currently own. While this shoe is surprisingly fast for what it is, I don't feel as fast in this shoe as I do in this shoe, but the end result of the data and the, the runs that I do is the, the end result is they're very similar. So I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these shoes, but if you're not used to carbon plated super shoes or this is going to be your first carbon plated super shoe, probably start here. This is just going to be much more understandable. It's going to be much more neutral. It's going to be much more friendly to someone who's just getting up to speed with a carbon plated racing shoe. This one is, it takes some getting used to, though I think this is the faster shoe. The last thing I'm gonna say about these two shoes is that if you're a heel striker, go this way. Remember that heel flare that's in the heel of this shoe? There's much more heel here. And Saucony's are really, I think, engineered around heel strikers and midfoot strikers where this shoe 
will work for heel strikers through forefoot strikers, including midfoot strikers, but there's not a lot of rubber back here. You, you, you're going to wear through this shoe really quickly, and the waist of this shoe, if you're a midfoot striker, there's just not a lot here. So this is going to be your better heel striking option. This will work, but you're going to burn through it really quick. But this is going to just really be optimal for heel strikers, especially with a wider foot. Moving forward to the Nike Vaporfly 3, as you can see, the Vaporfly 3 has 38 mil of foam in the heel, 30 in the forefoot with an 8 mil drop. So same drop, a little less foam than the Endorphin Pro 4. The Nike Vaporfly 3 weighs 6.5 ounces or 184 grams, which puts it at the same weight fundamentally as the Metaspeed Edge Paris that I just talked about. And again, that's for the US men's size 9. Now, these two shoes are extremely different in really every way. And I think if you look at the outsole, you can see that the Vaporfly is, is much narrower in its platform, but it's also much more nimble. So the, that one centimeter difference in the forefoot, you know, the multiple centimeter difference in the waist, and you know, around one centimeter in the heel really make a difference because the Nike just feels much more nimble. And I will also say that the Nike is really geared around uh, a forefoot striker. It can work for really any foot strike. And I think Nike has spent a lot of time to make the Vaporfly 3 work for more runners and across a lot more foot strikes, but it's still optimized around that forefoot strike. And you can see that from the contact patch of the rubber versus the Saucony where there's a lot more rubber in the forefoot, but there's also considerably more rubber that's more usable in the heel. Not only that, Power on PB, which is the foam in the Endorphin Pro 4, is much more durable. So you're going to get a lot more wear out of the Endorphin Pro 4, especially if you're a heel striker or midfoot striker. Now, these two shoes really couldn't be any different. As I was just describing, this is a very stiff shoe. The carbon plate in this shoe is extremely stiff. Combine that with Power on PB and Power on HD, which are the foams in the shoe. It's a stiff, shoe that you feel like you're up on a platform. You feel like you have all of that super foam under your foot. Where the Vaporfly, and this is a classic Vaporfly thing, is there's a lot more flex in this shoe. And there's a lot more flexibility in the plate of this shoe. It's still a stiff carbon plate, but the magic of the Vaporfly is that there's a lot more flex here. Combine that with a much softer foam. Now, Zoom X is the type of foam that you sink into the foams in the Saucony, you don't sink in at all. They're not that type of foam, but this one you sink into. So the combination of sinking into the foam, the very high energy return of this foam and the resiliency of this foam, combined with the flex of the plate and the dip in the midfoot and the toe spring in the front of the shoe, so the spoon in the forefoot of the plate, really gives you an energetic toe off in this shoe. Additionally, there's a very mild uh, forefoot rocker in this shoe, and it's very flat and very thin under the toe. So this really lets you dig in and push off the toe, something that you're just not gonna do in this shoe. Now I talked about how flexible this shoe is, and it's something that's really interesting to me because Saucony really has made this shoe extremely flexible. This is the Endorphin Speed 4. Now, I've, I've talked about how these two shoes, I think, work really well together because they have super foams that are very high uh, resiliency or energy return, but there's a lot of flex in both these shoes. In fact, the Endorphin Speed really has a lot of flex. This is a very flexible plated shoe. So these two shoes go very well together and they make a lot of sense together, which is why I'm very curious why this shoe is so stiff. Because I think Saucony's learned a lot about putting flex into the speed rail technology, putting flex into the plate. But these two shoes are really opposite ends of the spectrum as far as stiffness. If this shoe was a little bit softer, it would run a little bit more like a Vaporfly, though you would have to make the foam considerably softer in this shoe to make it really run like a Vaporfly. But the flex in this shoe, or pulling some of the flex from the Speed 4 into this shoe, would make these shoes much more um, related. As it stands now, they're not very related. What I will say is that from a running standpoint, the Nike Vaporfly 3 is a shoe that, again, I think works for a lot of runners. And it works for a lot of distances as well. This is Nike's all-around road racer. 
And again, with the Vaporfly 3, they spent a lot of time redesigning this shoe to make it work for more runners. So I think you can use either one of these shoes for really any road racing distance. And I think a lot of runners can run in either one of these shoes, though this shoe is going to be much more durable. It's going to have much more of a falling forward feeling because of the um, toe spring in the speed roll technology. Though, again, it's not as extreme as, say, the Metaspeed Edge Paris, but you're going to feel the roll forward in this shoe much more. You don't have really any roll in this shoe. This shoe kind of doesn't help you really at all. It does as far as the foam and the plate, but there's no sort of geometry in this shoe that's trying to roll you forward. This shoe rewards a good foot strike, strength, good training, and it will be there and it will really react to um, really good form and really a really good trained runner, but it's not going to help you the way this shoe is going to try to help you through. So for non-elite runners like myself and probably everyone watching this video, if you need some help in the later stages of a race, of a marathon, this is going to be a better bet because this shoe is going to help uh, support you, roll you forward, where this one's going to do a little bit. You're mostly going to get the benefit from the softer foam in the shoe, but this one's going to help you much more towards the end of a race. And I think for a lot of non-elite runners, this is probably the better choice between these two shoes. Though if you've never run in one of the top tier super shoes, I think you owe it to yourself to at least try the Vaporfly at some point because this is the icon. This is the classic super shoe. But for most runners, I'm going to say this one is the better option. And lastly, we have the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro 3. Now, what's interesting here is that on paper, these two shoes do have some similarities. And what's also interesting to me is that these shoes are separated by two years. The Adios Pro 3 came out in June of 2022 two years ago almost. And it's crazy that we're still talking about it, but that actually tells you how good of a shoe it actually is. Even with the upper, which I have a lot of problems with, I don't think I'm alone there, but the midsole and the outsole of the Audios Pro 3 are absolutely spectacular. So in the Audios Pro 3, we have 39.5 millifoam in the heel, 33 millifoam in the forefoot, giving you a 6.5 mil drop. You're not going to feel that half mil, but it's somewhere um, seven to eight mil, depending on how much you're weighting the heel of the shoe. The shoe weighs 7.6 ounces or 215 grams. And again, that's for the U.S. men's size nine reference size. And again, these specs are coming from running warehouse because they measure their shoes consistently across brands. Now, if you look at the stack heights, you look at the weights, you would say, okay, these shoes are similar. And I will say from a ride standpoint, the they are similar because they both offer sort of a rolling forward feeling, a very rolly off the forefoot or off the toe feeling. And a lot of that is the camber in the forefoot of the shoe. But if you look at the outsoles of the shoes, you can see that these shoes are extremely different and they're very much engineered for very different types of runners. So from a width standpoint in the forefoot, they're very similar, 11.7 centimeters versus 11.8. In the waist, honestly, they're fairly similar uh, as far as dimensions, though I'm going to say that the Endorphin Pro 4 is considerably wider and more stable with more support in the waist. As you can see in the Adios Pro 3, there's that big medial cutout where you see the rods. You do feel that, especially if you're landing in the midfoot or you're pronating. Uh, you do notice that, and a lot of people have complained about that gap there. And in the heel, Similar uh, 8.9 to 8.1, though obviously the Endorphin Pro 4 is considerably wider, and the heel flare on both the medial and lateral sides uh, really make that heel feel very wide. But as you can clearly see in the Audios Pro 3, this is really optimized around a forefoot strike. That huge contact patch in the forefoot of the shoe is really, truly optimized for a forefoot strike. And this really is sort of Saucony versus Adidas. Like I said, I think Saucony engineers their shoes more for heel striking and midfoot striking. They'll work for forefoot strikers, but they're really doing a lot of the engineering and stability around heel striking and midfoot striking, where Adidas uh, really is engineering around forefoot strikes. They will work for heel strikers. In fact, this is where I do think there are some similarities in that the Audios Pro 3 is probably the second best uh, super shoe out there for heel strikers because it's probably going to be your best bet given the firmness of Light Strike Pro foam. But again, as you can see, that four foot patch of rubber 
is massive and this shoe is really engineered around uh, engaging that forefoot in a very clean very efficient foot strike so when you look at the dimensions of these two shoes they look somewhat similar though i will say this shoe feels much bigger on foot i'm not going to call it bulky it's not that's not the right word it just feels like there's more shoe more foam underfoot some of that is the wider contact patch and all of this sort of width in the outsoles of the shoe. Some of that is the flaring in the medial and the lateral side of the geometry of the sidewalls of the midsole. This just gives you much more foam underfoot and you're much more on top of a lot of foam in a much more stable platform. This shoe has a similar a lot of foam feeling. There's sort of the endless foam uh, underfoot of this shoe. But from a stability standpoint, this shoe is not as stable. There's a kind of rocker across the forefoot of the shoe where if you're landing um, forefoot and supinating, it's absorbing and it's trying to roll you inward really quickly. But there is a lot of instability here, especially if you're someone who's supinating too much or you're on uneven pavement. This shoe feels like it wants to kind of roll outward, you know, move your, your ankle outward. But once you get this sort of... Uh, uh, the rods under the big toe essentially engage, and you're really getting this secondary platform right here engaged. There's a very smooth toe off in the shoe, but that initial instability could be a problem for someone. I think you need really strong ankles to run in this shoe, where this shoe is not going to give you that. From a run standpoint, both these shoes are going to roll you forward. They both have that sort of endless foam roll forward feeling. Like I've talked about, the speed roll technology in the Saucony is a very subtle sort of uh, helping hand continually rolling you forward even as your foam breaks down where the roll forward in this shoe is really about the rods in this shoe the heel to toe energy rods 2.0 carbon fiber rods and the big amount of uh, forefoot camber in this shoe or, or toe rocker in this shoe that's going to roll you forward very smoothly this shoe for two years now has had that sort of endless foam feeling which i feel like Saucony has really captured in this shoe quite well. Lastly, another place where I do think these shoes are very comparable is they're both a little wider than definitely the Vaporfly or the Metaspeed Edge Paris that I just talked about. However, neither one of these are really wide shoes, but if you have a wider, wider foot, these are probably going to be two really good options for you. However, with the Adios Pro 3, the upper on the shoe is problematic for a lot of runners. Now, in my initial impressions video of this that I did last year, I talked a lot about the problems with the upper, especially the eyelet chain, especially the base of the eyelet chain. It's really a disaster. But if you can find the right sock um, that doesn't, that kind of protects your foot and doesn't allow this upper to really affect your foot drastically, it still is going to. But if you find that right sock, you can kind of run in this mostly pain free. This actually has a fairly wide forefoot, a very narrow heel. So you do get a decent lockdown in this shoe and the upper is a very much no give upper. So if you can find a sock that makes this shoe work for you, you're gonna get a very good fit and you're gonna get a fairly generously wide fit. Again, very similar between these two shoes. And that's really where the Endorphin Pro 4's upper really I think stands out. This hexagonal weave upper that you can see is very comfortable, very accommodating to the foot, and I think it works really well. Even though this is a booty style upper, which I don't like, I want a tongue with laces just like this, I still think the lockdown in this shoe is very good because the textile that's used in this upper is very accommodating. So there's not a lot of rub points, there's no real pinch points in this shoe, the heel hold downs decent in this shoe, the uh, midfoot and the heel are, are somewhat narrow, they're much narrower than the Speed 4 in this shoe. I think overall the lockdown in this shoe is very good, not quite as good as this one once you get it dialed in with the right sock, but this is much easier to get your foot into. It's not going to hurt most people. It's a much more accommodating and comfortable upper between these two shoes. I hope that gives some more details to why I think this is such a good super shoe for maybe more runners, not elite runners. I think again, anyone can get into this shoe and they're going to understand it because it feels like a normal running shoe, but you're going to get the performance of sort of the top tier shoes that I just went through. This really is a great shoe. It's not perfect, but I think it's a great package and it's a great sort of compromise between a really good foam, a good carbon fiber plate, even though I do think it's a little too stiff, 
a decent upper that's got a great uh, textile, though I wish it had a real tongue and not a booty upper. And overall, this is a good shoe that I think most people can step into and have a really good experience with. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it'll help this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.